Hey rollers, today we're going to look at a match from the absolute division of a recent tournament. The smaller guy, Scott, is a lightweight, which means that he weighed in under 168 pounds, including the weight of his gi. Adam, on the other hand, competes as a super heavyweight, which means that he's anywhere over 220 pounds. After doing some quick maths, I worked it out to be at least a 55 pound weight difference. They're both white belts in their 30s, but you'll notice that Scott has earned a few stripes, so he may have spent more time training than Adam, whose white belt still looks pretty crispy fresh. Also, it's clear that Adam has not watched Henner Gracie's belt tying tutorial, where he explains how to avoid the weird up belt effect. Given the size difference, Scott doesn't have a lot of options at his disposal, but allowing Adam to get his meat hook grips seems like a mistake. As soon as he locks on, you can see how Adam is steering this dance wherever he wants it to go. The hand fighting is a bit white belty here, with neither one really denying grips or trying to strip them off. They just kind of grip and then re-grip somewhere else without addressing the grips being applied to them. The advantage definitely goes to Adam when it comes to maintaining grips. Scott uses his cross collar grip to bug Adam's neck a bit and this is where Adam looks to his coach as if to ask, can I just use my size and power to pull him to the ground? And his coach must have replied, this is Sparta! So here we go with white belt stuff that works part one, the ragdoll drag. Only the slow motion camera can capture the beautiful simplicity of this move. No loading up, no trips, just horsepower in the right direction. Unfortunately for Scott, Adam slid straight into side control. Even though Scott manages to temporarily bring his left knee into play, there's no real chance to re-guard because of the pressure that Adam's applying. It's easy to do some armchair quarterbacking and say that Scott should be building frames and shrimping out, but we've all had those situations where we've literally felt like there's a truck parked on us and we can't move. He's aware of the threat of the mount, so at least he's keeping his left leg high to block it. This is where Adam moved to big white belt stuff that works part two, the far side arm attacks. Big strong guys love this attack because it doesn't risk their position or require much speed or agility. They can just lay on you and grind away at one arm that can only fight the battle by itself for so long. A favorite of big guys has always been the Americana and that's what Adam is trying to lock on right now. Maybe you can hear Adam's coach telling him to bring your weight down. As a new competitor, he's still learning how to take his weight off of his own knees and use it to crush his opponent. I'm sure he will soon learn how to sink on top of his opponent, taking up any space and any hope of finding a way out. You can sense some urgency from Scott here as he tries to fight off these attacks. He's trying to create space by shrimping away, but Adam follows him and keeps his left knee close to Scott's hip. I'm not sure if Adam has some strange new submission in mind here, but my guess is that he just has his hands in the wrong place for an Americana. At this point, Scott is almost ready to tap because he can feel how isolated his arm is. Adam gives everything a crank in the wrong direction, but then realizes it and turns it into an Americana. The only defense for Scott at this point is to tap. Huge respect to both of these guys for stepping on the mat and competing. Check out my recent video, linked in the description below, where a lightweight defends himself effectively and sets up attacks against much larger opponents. Also, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching.